Hello guys, John with you, and it's time now for another update. Yes, another update on the uh, Sturmgeschutz Little Stug 4. Okay, it's from Italieri. Uh, and as I already said, didn't really enjoy the build that much, there wasn't really that much to do, and a uh, couple of little fit issues, some filling needed, some sort of clamping needed, and uh, not a hundred percent impressed but you know we got there got there anyway so then i started the painting of it and uh, as you can see i now have the camouflage done and i have all the detail painting done so the next thing now for it is to uh, uh decals a uh, bit of uh, chipping then the old gloss coat and uh, and weathering then after that one little bit of weathering that i have started um it's more of an experiment than anything else, I must admit. More of an experiment. Um, before I kind of turn it over and show it to you, what I did was I mixed a bit of. Right, I must, I must, I must confess, I'm a smoker, okay, and I smoke. So obviously, you've been a smoker, you have ashtrays. So once you take out the cigarette butts, you're left with a pile of ash in the bottom. So I've been saving it for a while. Weirdly enough, kind of a weird thing, I saved ash, some cigarette ash. And uh, I mixed it with a bit of PVA glue and added in some very, very fine sand. And I came up with this gunk. Okay. Now, I made this last night. I have it, I have it in a sealed container, so it's all kind of uh, still there. Now, I'll, I'll use a Q tip. <coughs> Give it a bit of no stir up, right? What we've got here is the sludge that I made, okay? Right, so as you can see, it's, it's a kind of a muddy... No, it, it's a bit whitish looking. And that's purely from the... Uh, uh, from, from from the PVA glue, okay? But uh, it makes a kind of a greyish, brownish, gunky sludge. Oh yes, I also added in a little bit of flat earth paint, okay? From the uh, Tamiya flat earth. Okay, just a kind of it was just a bit too grey, and I wanted a bit of uh, variation in there, so I added a bit of that. So what I did was I, as you can see, it's kind of sludgy and gunky and quite disgusting. Okay, yeah, it smells of cigarette ash. But anyway, um, I use a, an old brush. Okay, an old brush. This is the old brush I used quite uh, quite old quite battered bruised and bleeding but uh, and I plastered this stuff on the uh, on the underside of the vehicle and on the uh, should we say the, the sides and a little bit at the back as well just you know for mud splatters and this is what we've ended up with now oops I'm trying, trying to grab this in a, in a way that I'm not squashing these yolks all right now Take me a little bit of time to get the to get the light right on this, okay, and that we can see it, right? Now, as you can see, it's got bits of grey in it, bits of brown. It's uh, quite gritty, okay. So it's got a, a fair old bit of texture to it. Okay, did a bit at the bottom as well. And it's to sort of replicate dried mud. It was just ideas on, 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 on you know how to get sort of different types of dried mud and different effects. But there we go. That's what I'm after. Kind of ended up with. Now it is a little bit shiny, and that is purely from the uh, from from the PVA glue. It kind of gives it a bit of a, a sheen. It can't, doesn't really show up there. Okay, and a little bit then at the back where the mud would kind of just splash up. On the back of it. Now it wasn't, shall we say, a hundred, a hundred percent successful, but at the same time, it wasn't a failure. Okay, it, it, I mean, once I kind of continue on with the weathering process, I kind, I should be able to get that quite nice. You know, a couple of washes and things like that. That should end up lovely. But before I go on with washes on it, what I'll do is I, I'll gloss coat it, sort of seal it in, because otherwise I, I'm in danger of kind of. Uh, you know, um, what would be to say, inact in inactivating, unactivating the PVA glue and letting it all just fall off again. 
okay so uh, a bit of a uh, gloss coat will seal that in and I'll do it when I'm doing the, the gloss coat of the vehicle itself for the um, after I put on the decals and do the bit of uh, chipping but uh, you know hopefully 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 it'll work out okay so there's my uh, my, 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 my camo pattern again right there we go as you can see I use the brown right now, I don't know what this pattern is called I know it's an ambush pattern, but uh, it's the, the, the brown streaking, okay. Um, and there we go on the Scherzens, okay. And like I said, a bit of uh, blue tack on the back of those. Again, the, 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 having to play around with lights, I don't have this, this sort of big professional lighting setup where you've got light coming from all directions so everything shows up grand. I gotta kinda keep moving around my light to get to get it right and some bits it looks right and some bits it won't. But uh take it from me, there we go. It's a bit just a bit of blue text stuck in the back. Uh in an area that you're not going to see because uh blue tech when you use it, I, I I try to use it as a masking thing for uh camouflage patterns at one stage. And it kinda leaves a bit of a residue. And uh, I wasn't really happy with the with the residue on them. But uh, you know, I'm I'm happy with that pattern. I'm happy with that pattern. Um, it'll all blend in better with the uh, with the weathering and all that. It'll come out quite nice. Um, with the wheels, then, okay. I did all the uh, the the rubber around the, uh, the, the 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 wheels, the rubber part of the wheels, on the return rollers. A little bit of silvering on the uh, on the edges. And also on the uh, dry sprockets. Okay, as you can see, there is just a little bit of silver there on those. I've also got the uh, the return rollers done. Okay, they're all there. And also, what is uh, oh, just literally just finished before I turned on the camera, I gave the tracks their uh, first coat, their undercoat shall we say and for the undercoat because remember they were, they were, they were these tracks there were uh, I have a bit of the old track here or, well a bit of the track unused track shall we say uh, that's the colour that they came right bright silver colour no I'll just turn that back in the right way no the, the, they popped in together very very easily very very nicely indeed um, just a bit of a bit of heat onto a onto onto a screwdriver. There we go and they melted together quite nicely. Um with no problems with the with the little little holes that, that that were already in place. Little pieces pop up and you melt them down and you end up with a kind of a nice thing. Remember don't have the screwdriver too hot. You don't want to burn it but you just want to kind of uh, melt them together so you end up with a nice uh, nice kind of a melty series. But uh, for, for, for the base coat for them, okay, there's a little bit of a shine off it, and that's because I used this, okay, which is XF84 Dark Iron from Tamiya. XF84, go on, John, there we go. XF84, okay, Dark Iron from Tamiya. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And that's my undercoat for the tracks, okay, and there's my uh, little one there for the for the front. Now what I'm going to do with them then is uh, I have another little bit of a mixture that I made up with uh, a, the remnants of a bottle of that, and I mixed in some NATO brown, a uh, little bit of uh, whole red, and I've ended up with a kind of a rustyish colour. Now that rustyish colour, I have it there on the back of the uh, the vehicle there on the on the exhaust and believe it or not it's, it's, it's a lovely dark rust colour now I don't know the, raci the ratios that I used but they're the paints that I use and you can kind of play around with it yourself but uh, you do end up with a nice a nice rust colour okay and after you give that a couple of washes and little bits and things you know a, a nice black wash and stuff like that that will make that up quite nice as well right now Peter I can't get a nice 
in focus picture of that. There we go, I suppose it's about as in focus as I can get it. Right. Maybe it's the light. But that actually is very, very nice. Uh, even if I do say so myself, which I do, but uh, it is a nice, it is a nice rusty colour, and uh, I'm going to give that a light. A, that that's pretty heavy, but I'm going to give it a light dusting over the tracks, and that'll give the tracks their kind of the rustiness then, and then a quick dry brushing down with silver on the um, on the raised edges and things like that. Not too much, and that will sort of. Uh, that should be the tracks finished at that. I'm not going to go with pigments or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not going to bother. Simple as that. I don't. If you're using it in a dial, then obviously you're going to use pigments because you're going to have your uh, your, your 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 dust effects and all that. But when it's going to be sticking sitting on the shelf, you don't really want too much pigments on it. Um, it just it just doesn't look right, I think. But um, you know, stand alone. I'd be happy with that. Um, I know I'm kind of made a, sort of a, you could say it's sort of a pigment thing with that. It's just that I wanted the texture more than anything else. And uh, the colours, I'm very, very happy with them. And I'm, I'm just really happy with the whole effect. I know it's a bit of a shine, but once you kind of cancel the out, cancel out the shine and, and, and sort of see through it, if you know what I mean, as in see the bigger picture, see what's going to end up like for a finish, um, you can kind of, well, I can anyway. <laughs> I can kind of imagine what it's going to look like for a finish once I'm done with it. If everything works out right. Obviously, if, if everything works out right. That's a big if, isn't it? If, then, quit, stiff, and the ball demands quiff. But anyway, biggest word in the dictionary is if, believe it or not. One of the longest explanations in the dictionary. Could get up an old Collins English Dictionary and have a look at the, uh, look up the word if, and you'll find maybe nearly a page and a half of explaining what the word if means so if it works out grand I'm happy so anyway that's, that's it another quick update on the Stug uh, if you want to see more updates best thing to do is to subscribe to the channel and if you've already subscribed to the channel thank you very much I really really appreciate it and of course hitting the bell and by hitting the bell you'll be notified straight away as soon as I upload the next update Okay. Also, stay tuned this week for an update. Well, an update more than not, not an update, but an announcement. Yes, an announcement. Uh, I'm going to run uh, in. It'll be run in February, and it's a sort of um, a fun build. Okay, for everybody to join in. Okay. Um, hopefully, you'll kind of. Watch the channel, and you'll be updated as soon as I put it up. <laughs> Easiest way to describe it, isn't it? But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do a um, run a little uh, fun build for everybody to join in and uh, build your own little um, little bit. So, as I can say, stay tuned to the channel. There will be an announcement up in the next day or two on that. Okay, so in the meantime, enjoy your modeling, be nice to one another, stay safe, and all that jazz. Um, don't forget to keep your hands washed and faces covered and hazmat suits on when you're doing everything and anything out in public. Uh, and don't believe a word of the government is telling you. <laughs> don't believe a word of it, they're telling you lies. Anyway, lads, I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe, and uh, but most important of all, most important of all. Go out and buy yourself a kit. Build it. Enjoy it. That's what it's all about. Building and enjoying. I'll see you in the next one, lads. Take care and uh, stay safe.